Okay, so now we come to the end of these questions, and it's a bit of a difficult one to end on. So this uh, relates to a kind of molecule that you probably won't have seen before, the isocyanin. Now, this question is uh, designed to challenge you, so don't worry if you struggled with it. That's what this video is for. Um, it's all to get you thinking the right way about answering these questions. So using the concepts that you are aware of and applying them to new situations. Okay. So isocyanates, they are organic compounds that are used in the production of polymers and pesticides. Uh, and the general structure of one is shown there, with the R representing any generic alkyl group. So the first question asks you, what type of reaction occurs in step one? Okay, so you can see in step one, all that's happened is that a proton has been lost from here, and you have reacted it with sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is a base, and you've lost a proton. So what's happened here is that the base has removed a proton. So this is a simple acid alkali or acid base reaction or an elimination reaction or a neutralization reaction okay if you said any of those four options then you would get the marks for that first question that is the type of reaction that is occurring in step one because a proton is being removed okay the second question this is where things get tricky. Okay, <laughs> Draw curly arrows on compound D to suggest a mechanism for step two. And this is worth three marks. Okay, So if you're only drawing curly arrows and it's worth three marks, you can be pretty certain that you're going to have to draw three curly arrows. Okay, So as I said, this is where things get super tricky. So you need to look at, for this one, what I would recommend is that you look at the product, see where you're going to, and see if you can map what you're doing onto that. Okay. So the first thing that's quite clear is happening is that you've got a Br- and you've got a bromide ion uh, left on its own. So that is no longer part of compound E, not compound D. Right? So what's going to happen is the electron, pairs in, uh, the electron pair in this bond is going to be knocked onto the bromine and form a bromide ion, so it's kicked out effectively. So you've lost that. Okay. So what's going to happen now? Well, this is where, as I said, things are going to get tricky. So you need to think about where there are electrons in this uh, in this uh, molecule, in this intermediate. So there's a pair of electrons on this nitrogen atom. Uh, I should say iron, really, because it's got negative charge. So this pair of electrons, you're going to likely be drawing uh, a curly arrow from there, because as we know, curly arrows represent electron movement. So what's going to happen now is you can see that there is a nitrogen carbon double bond where this carbon is attached to the oxygen in the final product okay so you can be fairly sure that this pair of electrons is going to drop to there okay so you form this carbon nitrogen double bond there okay now as you're probably aware you can't have five bonds well you should be aware if you aren't anyway a carbon cannot have five bonds attached to it, okay? It can only have four. So you've got one, two, three, four, five here now with this double bond. So one of these bonds needs to be broken. As you can see in the final product, you've got the bond to the nitrogen and the bond to the oxygen. So you have to break the bond between the carbon and the other carbon. So this is going to go somewhere. So the curly arrow is going to go from this bond. But where's it going to go to? So look what the CH3 is attached to in the final product. It is attached to the nitrogen. So this pair of electrons is going to attack the nitrogen. Okay. And there you have it. That is your final product. And there are your three marks. So one there, one there, and one there. And you can check to make sure this is okay. So you've formed a bond from the nitrogen to the carbon. So it's a double bond now. You have a double bond to the oxygen. This bond is now broken and it's on the nitrogen and you've lost bromide ions. Okay, And so you can see that that maps perfectly onto that, though I've drawn it the opposite way around. And there are your products. Okay, So those are the three curly arrows. However, there's your three marks. You can also do this in another way that would have been given credit. Okay. 
So you would also have got credit if you drew the curly arrow like that. And then you drew this pair of electrons going to the CH3, and then this pair of electrons here. To help if I could draw correctly. And then this pair of electrons here going to this bond here. Okay, you would have also got the three marks for doing that. But the correct way, what actually happens in reality is this. So the order that this happens in is the electrons on this nitrogen ion, they kick into there. You get what is known as a rearrangement, where the methyl group goes here to make the molecule more stable, and then you lose bromide as it is a stable leaving group. So that's the order of events in real life. But you can see by looking at the reaction, uh, by looking at the product, by looking at what could go where, using your chemical intuition, you can try and figure out where this reaction goes. So, hopefully, using the concepts that you've learned and you're aware of now with respect to organic mechanistic chemistry, you can use those concepts to any new situation and apply them. That's the key. Remember, step by step, go through it, use the concepts and follow through, and you should be able to tackle any problem with relative ease. Okay? I hope these videos have been useful and I thank you for your time in using them.